Well, hello and greetings, International Studies 200 students. Welcome to our module on cultural globalization. This module on cultural globalization spans uh, a couple of weeks. And for this week, we have a, a reading by John McCormick in a textbook on global studies on culture and identity to give us a framework to look at, at, at culture under globalization or within globalization. And then next week, we have a couple of um, what we could call cultural artifacts that we'll be studying in the form of poems that uh, not only are expressions of, of culture, but have a global relevance as well. So we're actually going to use those as a sort of lens through which to study cultural globalization. Um, that's next week. For this week, we have the reading on um, culture and identity. And what I really wanted to do is focus today primarily on culture. What is it? How do we define it? How have scholars defined it? So I want to go over a couple of definitions with you on culture. And I want to end on um, really getting into, really diving into an anthropological um, view or definition of culture, uh, particularly Clifford Geertz. Um, he's a, a famous anthropologist and he has a um, foundational book on culture called The Interpretation of Culture. And if you've taken anthropology classes, um, you may have heard of his name or heard of um, his uh, theories and concepts, which are very important. So as you know, we are in international and global studies here, and we use interdisciplinary approaches, which means sometimes we draw from anthropology, sociology, economics, and so on. And so for today, we'll be kind of um, looking, taking a little bit of an anthropological, sociological look at culture. It's a huge concept. Um, it's very broad. Uh, tens of thousands of articles and books have been published on it. Scholars have debated it for centuries. Um, and so it's, it's an unwieldy term, but we're going to try to wrap our heads around it. And so what I wanted to do is just start out with the basic definition, right? So if you go to um, online dictionary, so if you go and you Google Oxford Dictionary, that's always a good one to, to Google, um, they'll give you the following definition. So and this is Oxford, simply the Oxford Dictionary. If you just go to culture, this is what it says. Culture is the arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively, such as 20th century popular culture or hip hop culture. And it's also the customs, art, social institutions, and achievements of a particular nation, people, or other social group, e.g. Caribbean culture, people from many different culture. And I wanted to note that social institutions here, the combination of an institution and society, social institution, can include anything ranging from religion to societal beauty standards. Um, so here we have culture defined in two ways. One is that it's a set of customs, arts, social institutions, and achievements of a particular nation. And another is that it's the expression of those social institutions, customs, um, values, worldviews, such as arts or literature. And that's all falls under culture. All right. So I wanted to go through a couple more ways of looking at culture to just sort of reinforce what that is um, or how we can define it. And I think um, in your reading for this week, the PDF John McCormick does a pretty good, idea, pretty good job of defining it as well. So if you look on page 65 in the PDF of our reading for this week, he says that culture is a term used in anthropological or sociological contexts to describe a community of people with a shared history and common values, beliefs, and customs. It can also be used to describe the expressions of a community in the form of art, cuisine, literature, or music, but it can also describe a set of assumptions associated with an institution or society. So he has a, a sort of three ways of looking at it. Two are um, directly following the Oxford Dictionary definition. One is that it's uh, 
about social customs and practices and beliefs, and another is that it's the expressions of a culture in the sense of its arts, whether that's literature or music or particular kinds of food or dress or clothing. All that is um, subsumed under the very broad umbrella of culture. Um, so it can be used to describe, as he says, the expressions of a community in the form of art, cuisine, literature, or music. So that's one way of looking at culture or maybe one side of the coin. Um, but it is also used to describe a, a community, community of people with a shared history, common values, beliefs, um, customs. Um, so it's the, the sort of mechanics of that community of people um, in terms of practices, beliefs, customs, traditions, um, and any, any social institution that um, exists in that particular community or society of people, right? So it's the expressions of and, and customs, we can say. Um, but he also adds another aspect to it in that it can describe um, a set of assumptions or ideas associated with an institution or society. And so this can get towards um, our term that we've used before, ideology, so a set of ideas um, that actually shape practice, right, or shape behavior, a set of ideas. Um, and so we can think of culture as including a sort of world view, right? It's how uh, a particular culture, group, community, or even nation um, view the world, understand it, and how that understanding of the world or those set of ideas shapes how they act, right? Um, Another definition I wanted to, to run in to, to run by you is from our textbook, which we're not reading this week. Um, but if you wanted to go back and read um, chapter, I believe it's five, on cultural globalization, this gives you even more of a resource on culture and globalization. And so from our textbook, again, which we haven't read this week, but you can go back to, um, Smallman and Brown define culture as a people's ideals, their values, their way of life, and the practices they're from. They look at music, dance, theater, sports, literature, and the ways in which technology like the internet, radio, film, and television are used and made, and the things from food and fashion, and, and things or artifacts or practices uh, from food to fashion have also been tied to culture and its traditions. And so this actually gives us a bit more of uh, more ideas to think about in terms of culture because they include um, dance, theater, sports even, they mention literature, um, technologies like the internet, radio, film, um, and how they're used and how they're made and how they're reproduced, how people think about them. Um, and everything from food to fashion, the kinds of clothes a, a, a group of people clothes themselves are expressive of a certain um, identity or worldview or, or um, a particular choice or tr even tradition, right? So all of that is cultural. Um, so you have this basic, basic kind of definition now. So it spans everything from customs and expressions, the social institutions and practices and worldviews. Um, all the way to things and technologies like internet, radio, film, uh, food and fashion, and how those are thought about and how those are, how those are um, uh, expressed, really. So what I want to do now is turn towards a, um, a, a bit more of an anthropological definition of, of culture. And when we get into it, um, it's going to sound a little bit familiar in terms of the definitions that we've already covered. Um, but it's going to get a little bit more technical, um, a little bit more complex than these sort of baseline definitions of, of culture. And the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because it's an important methodology that we use in international and global studies to understand, for our purposes here, cultural globalization, right, and how culture functions in an interconnected world but also for you just to have a, a critical tool and a, a critical understanding of, of just what culture is and how it operates. Um, so I wanted to read a fairly 
a fairly uh, extended passage from Clifford Geertz's famous book called The Interpretation of Culture. I highly recommend it um, because it gives us a good way to think about what culture is. And he starts off in this passage by going over um, a set of concepts that another anthropologist, uh, Clyde um, Cluckon, uses to define culture. And so he talks about how in this anthropologist's book, that in some 27 pages of his chapter, he manages to define culture in turn as number one, the total way of life of a people, number two, the social legacy the individual that the individual acquires from their group. So that's the social legacy the individual acquires from their group. Three, a way of thinking, feeling, and behaving. Four, an abstraction from behavior. Five, a theory on the part of the anthropologist about the way in which a group of people in fact behaves. So it's a, also a methodology. Six, a storehouse of pooled learning. So this is everything that a culture knows from its history to its traditions to its values to the way that it goes about existing in the world. So a whole storehouse of pooled learning. Um, pool there suggests that it's social, that it's communal. Seven, a set of standardized orientations to recurrent problems. So how a culture solves problems, how a group solves problems. Eight, learned behavior. Nine, a mechanism for the normative regulation of behavior. So this just means social norms. 10, a set of techniques for adjusting both to the external environment and to other people. So how to exist and relate to one another. Um, and we can also include earlier definitions of technology. And finally, 11, a precipitate a precipitate of history, right? So that's the kind of um, history as it's archived, an archive of history, really, or um, or, a, or a sort of uh, a communal understanding of history. So maybe it's sort of like the um, shared knowledge. Uh, so if you think of, if you sort of uh, anthropomorphize a library, for example, so culture has a kind of library that it shares in their uh, consciousness and their learning and teaching and practices, right? So it's this uh, precipitate of history, right? And that kind of goes along with this idea that it's a storehouse of pooled knowledge. So all this leads Clifford Geert to, to argue that, quote, the concept of culture that I espouse, this is Clifford Geert's, is that a person is an animal suspended in webs of significance that they themselves have spun. A person is an animal subs uh, suspended in webs of sub significance or meaning that they, have, they themselves have spun. I take culture to be those webs. I take culture to be those webs. And the analysis of it to be therefore not an experimental science in search of law, but an interpretive one in search of meaning. So let's pause here. We got a really sort of complex set of definitions of culture, um, 11 uh, uh, mechanisms or 11 um, ways of defining it. And this leads Clifford Geertz to say that what he argues is that people are animals suspended in webs of significance or meaning and that culture itself are cultures are themselves those webs culture is the web right that we're all suspended in and we've created that web ourselves and the web is a whole interwoven um, complex of meaning and significance. What's important, right? Significance, meaning. So what Clifford Geertz has done is used a metaphor here. 
So he's comparing two unlike things to make a point. And so he's saying that culture is like a spider web. So we know a spider web is this complex, uh, interwoven um, structure. It's malleable, it's changeable, um, and it's constantly being made and remade and made and remade. And it's so important to the entire life of the spider, right? It's the spider's whole life because the spider has spun uh, or cultures and people have spun these webs um, and those webs are uh, webs of meaning and significance and that in includes um, institutions, social institutions and things like that. So he uses this interesting metaphor of the web uh, to define culture and he says it's, it's interpretive. It's not a science in the sense that there are hard and fast laws. That's because it's uh, mutable and it's changing like a spider web and it's constantly being made and remade. There's not one set of absolute laws that everybody in the world follows. Uh, there's a, a multiplicity of cultures, webs, meanings, um, and you can get a sense of how complex it is by our discussion here, um, just trying to define what culture is and how important and how broad it is. And so we can say, finally, that we can answer the question of what is culture, or at least we can do it um, based on what we've learned so far. So culture includes all of the above and more, everything that we've just talked about, all the definitions we went over, so it includes all that. And we can also say that it is an analytical lens that we can use culture that is, an analytical lens, a methodology that we can use as one way to study globalization. It is distinct from an economic lens, for example, or a political lens, as we've covered, or an environmental lens. At the same time, culture is intimately connected with economic, political, environmental, and other issues. So. It should be no surprise by now in this class that each section, whether economic, political, cultural, or environmental, are tightly interwoven with each other. So you can't separate the economic and political, tightly interwoven as we've seen. Same goes with culture and cultural globalization. So you cannot separate the cultural and the economic. We know that economics isn't some independent machine that's running in the clouds with no respect to human cultures and human societies, that it has meaning behind it, it has values behind it, it has ideologies behind it. And how do we study that? Well, it's cultural, it's societal. The way that we use this broad, broad technology and interrelation called economics comes out of, the, of, of various cultures, comes out of um, webs of meaning, has webs of meaning behind it has world views, has ideologies that actually drive the, the concrete mechanics of it. And so you can't separate culture and economics or culture and, and politics. And culture, for example, is also another way, in addition to economics and, and politics, for us to study globalization. And so that's where we're going, what we're going to cover in the remaining, um, in the remaining, re remaining module on cultural globalization is how, how, does it, how does it allow us to think about the world? How does it allow us to um, uh, assess the world and examine it? And then how can we use cultural expressions that have a global significance to understand and make arguments about that world? And how does that then allow us to solve some of the problems that we want to try to solve as um, citizens of the world, citizens of a nation, and, and um, invested scholars in the in the health of the, the world and the nations and the regions in it. So to sum up, we can define culture roughly as the customs, arts, including music, film, art itself, literature. It's the expressions, social institutions and social norms, ways of being, values. It's the webs or structures of meaning or significance people have and the achievements of a particular nation people, or other social group. So this, all of our discussion today in tandem with your reading 
the, the John McCormick PDF, Identity and Culture. If you'd also like to go back and take a, a look at the culture chapter in our textbook, I would recommend that. And then we'll have our discussion, whether online or live, next week about some ex global expressions of culture that actually give us a good way of understanding globalization itself. Um, all of that will give us a good way to understand not just culture, but global, gl cultural globalization, which is our module for this week. And so, so that's it. And I look forward to seeing you um, online, live discussion, um, either one of those. And be well. Thank you.